Hi, I'm Ben, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Ben. I share loads of skincare tips, tricks, and product recommendations to help you get the best skin ever in the cleanest way possible. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure to click that little subscribe button, and don't forget to hit that notification bell as well so you don't miss any of my uploads. Well, I am back in New York. Any of you who watched my most recent daily vlog know that. I'm back in my apartment, hence the change of environment, and it's my first video filming in my apartment since coming back to New York. I'm so excited about today's video. It comes highly requested and it's a new installment in my brand review series and it is my brand review of Glossier. Glossier is such an interesting brand and I get asked about it all the time so I'm so pumped about this video. As always I'm going to start with a little bit of an overview of the brand and then we're going to jump into Glossier's best-selling products and do a deep dive into their ingredients. If I think that there are ingredients that can help the product live up to their claims and then whether or not I recommend each individual product. And then of course there will be an overall rating of the brand. It'll either get a thumbs up, a thumbs in the middle or a thumbs down. So we have a lot of information to cover and a lot of exciting products to discuss. So let's jump in. So first, a little bit about Glossier. Glossier is an independent beauty brand that was started in New York City, so they are not owned by an overall conglomerate. They are still an independent brand. They started with makeup, and as their makeup products became more and more popular, they then also released skincare products as well. They are sold exclusively at Glossier.com and then also in Glossier stores. They have stores in a handful of different cities around the country. And in good news, they are cruelty-free. So that's always something that I love to see from a brand. Um, all of their makeup and skincare products are cruelty-free, which is wonderful. So let's talk about product. The first product that I want to talk about is their moisturizer, which is Priming Moisturizer Rich. This is a really interesting product. It's marketed as a moisturizer that's really rich and hydrating and that will work really well under makeup and actually act kind of as a primer for makeup products that are to follow. So this was definitely a moisturizer that was formulated with makeup in mind. So let's take a look at the ingredients. Honestly, this moisturizer contains some incredible ingredients and the list of ingredients was actually too long for me to try to memorize, so I have it on my phone in front of me. It contains glycerin, squash, Squalane, ceramides, hyaluronic acid, honey extract, and shea butter, all of which are amazing, amazing hydrating ingredients. I love the ceramides because they're going to help to strengthen the skin barrier. The hyaluronic acid is obviously a humectant, so it will attract moisture and also kind of plump the skin. Honey extract and shea butter are just both incredible, incredible hydrating ingredients. Glycerin is also really hydrating, and squalane is a wonderful ingredient for both hydrating and strengthening the skin. So overall, it's a really powerhouse combo of hydrating and strengthening ingredients but I don't love everything about this product. It does unfortunately have fragrance in it, which is always something that I try to steer clear of because it can potentially be irritating. And from a clean beauty perspective, there are also a couple issues with this product. So it does have dimethicone, which is a form of silicone. And silicone is not something that I really recommend for people that struggle with acne prone skin like me. I find that dimethicone really does worsen my acne and silicones in general. So this would not be something that I recommend for people that struggle with acne prone skin. But I'm also just not a big fan of silicones because of their environmental impact. They're not a very sustainable ingredient to use in cosmetics products, so it's just not really something that I like to see. This formula also does unfortunately contain a PEG. If you're not familiar with PEGs, PEG stands for polyethylene glycol. They're added to formulas for consistency and texture. Fortunately, there's a host of issues associated with them. If they're not properly purified, they can contain extremely dangerous byproducts, and there's really no way for consumers to know whether or not the PEGs in their products have been properly purified. Purified. But that being said, even if brands do properly purify their PEGs, which many of them do, making them safer for use on the skin, the process of creating and purifying PEGs is really terrible for the environment. So I personally never use PEGs in any of my products. Again, there are just lots of ingredients that can do the exact same thing that PEGs do without the environmental impact and the slim chance of something being dangerous to use on your skin. So I don't love to see that PEG in the formula. In terms of whether or not it lives up to its claims, I think it definitely does. It has tons of really great hydrating ingredients to hydrate the skin, and it will definitely work as an effective makeup primer because of that concentration of dimethicone in the formula. Dimethicone is one of the most common ingredients in makeup primers, so if you are looking for something that's going to be hydrating and also priming on the skin, this will definitely do the trick. However, based on these other things that are in the formula, it's just not really something that I would recommend, and in general, I don't really recommend using dimethicone on the skin. So overall, with the Priming Moisturizer Rich, I would not recommend this product based on those other ingredients 
ingredients in the formula, even though I love the hydrators that are added. So up next, we are going to be talking about Glossier's Solution. Solution is Glossier's chemical exfoliating product, and it hits a powerful punch with its chemical exfoliants. It combines AHAs, BHAs, and PHAs all into one formula. It's in a lightweight liquid formula, and you can apply it either with your hands or with a cotton pad. So its main claim is that it's exfoliating, and it definitely has active ingredients to support this claim. For the BHAs, it uses 0.5% salicylic acid, which is obviously one of my favorite favorite ingredients. It's so effective. This is a little bit of a lower concentration than I would normally like to see in a leave-on product, but because it's combined with AHAs and PHAs, I wouldn't really actually want to have a full 2% or a higher concentration of salicylic acid in the formula. For the AHAs or alpha hydroxy acid, it uses glycolic acid, lactic acid, and phytic acid, all of which are great exfoliating acids for the skin. And for the PHA, it uses gluconolactone, which is a really popular form of PHA or polyhydroxy acid. I also like to see in the formula that it contains aloe and niacinamide, both of which can help to soothe the skin, and then of course niacinamide can also help to address the appearance of pores, oil production, help improve the appearance of discoloration. It has so many different benefits. I have a whole video on niacinamide. If you are curious, you can check it out. So in terms of ingredients to support the claims, this product seriously hits home. It has AHAs, BHAs, and PHAs, and it has a wonderful mix of those. But unfortunately, I don't really like this product, and it's one that I've actually tried myself. The reason that I don't really like it is because it's just a little bit too much, in my opinion. Combining all of these exfoliating acids into one product was a little bit too much of a heavy punch for my skin. The reason that I feel this way is because the primary body of this is the AHAs. It contains three AHAs and then a single BHA and a single PHA. The issue with AHAs is that while they can have good skin benefits, they can also be really irritating. So combining three AHAs with two other exfoliating acids is just a little bit too much in the formula. When I use this product on my skin, it was definitely pretty irritating and sensitizing. I of course have pretty sensitive skin, but in general, I prefer to use a product that has just BHAs or just AHAs, or if it is a mixed one that's a little bit gentler. The other issue for me is that this product does have fragrance, so on top of this kind of harsh mix of exfoliating acids, it also has potentially irritating fragrance, and when I used it on my skin, I definitely felt that irritation. My skin was definitely a little bit red and sensitized after using it, so it was not an experience that I really loved. Additionally, from a clean beauty perspective, this formula does unfortunately also have PEGs in it, which I don't love to see, and the fragrance is not disclosed. It's just listed as parfum slash fragrance, so I really have no idea what fragrance additives were added to the formula. Of course, I do still love these actives. One of my favorite BHA products is the Paula's Choice 2% BHA liquid exfoliant, which uses 2% salicylic acid and is really nice and gentle on the skin. And if you are someone who likes AHAs, Crave Beauty has a wonderful AHA product, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce it because I've never been able to figure it out, but it has a really nice ingredients list and is very effective. And of course, for PHAs, one of my favorite products is the Then I Met You Soothing Tea Cleansing Gel, which incorporates gentle PHAs into your cleansing routine, which is really nice. So then the next product that I want to talk about is the Milky Jelly Cleanser, which is actually the first Glossier product that I encountered and that really gained a lot of popularity, at least on like my social media and with my friends. I was really drawn to this cleanser because of its texture and its consistency, but unfortunately I'm not in love with the ingredients list. It does have allantoin, glycerin, and hyaluronic acid, which are wonderful because they're gentle and they're hydrating, and it definitely contributes to this cleanser being a gentle and hydrating option, but unfortunately it contains an ingredient that I never like to use on my acne prone skin and that I never recommend to anyone struggling with acne and that is isopropyl myristate. Isopropyl myristate is actually not an uncommon ingredient to find in cleansers but unfortunately it has a pretty high comedogenesy rating and I find that when I use products with isopropyl myristate it is like clockwork, instantly new breakouts. So isopropyl myristate is definitely an ingredient that I steer clear of with acne prone skin and unfortunately this product also does have a PEG which is a no-go for me from a clean beauty perspective, so I personally wouldn't recommend it. So then the next product that I want to talk about is their sunscreen, their invisible shield. This product caused a lot of conversation when it first came out because it was a pretty innovative texture and appearance, but unfortunately, I don't really like the formula. This is because they utilize chemical sunscreen filters, which is something that I'm just really not comfortable with. Conclusive evidence was pretty recently released that chemical sunscreen filters do absorb into the bloodstream, and the FDA is actually awaiting new research on whether 
whether or not there are negative impacts of having these chemical sunscreens absorbed into the bloodstream. So pretty much right now, there's just a giant question mark as to whether or not chemical sunscreens are safe to use. The other concern is that chemical sunscreens do have a higher likelihood of irritating the skin versus mineral sunscreens. So I personally never use chemical sunscreen filters and steer clear of this product for that reason. But even if you are someone that feels comfortable with chemical sunscreens and likes using them, this product does have fragrance, which does have potential for skin irritation, of course. And looking at the formula, there just aren't a lot of skin benefiting ingredients. A ton of the ingredients that are in this formula are for its consistency and its texture and its appearance instead of actually ingredients that are going to be really beneficial to the skin. So I personally like to use a really nice mineral sunscreen that doesn't have a white cast. And one of my favorites is the Purito Comfy Water Sunblock SPF 50. It's very lightweight. It's water-based. It doesn't leave a white cast and it absorbs into the skin really quickly, but it doesn't use those chemical sunscreen filters. It's fragrance-free and it's hydrating on the skin. So lastly, I want to talk about the super serums. There are three super serums, super pure, super glow, and super bounce. And I'm just going to do a quick little dive into each one of them. So if you've been watching my channel, you know, super pure is one of my favorite skincare products. And it's one that I'm absolutely obsessed with right now. Super pure is their niacinamide and zinc serum. And it has the most amazing formula. It's super clean, super simple. It has 5% niacinamide, which is a perfect concentration for use on the skin. And I absolutely love this product. It is so, so good. Super Glow is their vitamin C serum. Super Glow, I'm a little bit less in love with. This is because it only contains 5% vitamin C. So that's a good concentration for someone who's just starting with vitamin C, but most of the research around vitamin C demonstrates that closer to a 15% concentration is really when you start to see the most efficacy and 5% is a little bit low. That doesn't mean that it's bad because like I said, it can be a really great place to start, especially if you're someone who's never used vitamin C before. But if you are someone who's been using vitamin C regularly, I always recommend a slightly higher concentration. The other thing about this one that I don't love is it does contain dimethicone. So I don't love that it has a silicone in the formula and I wouldn't recommend it for people with acne prone skin. So overall, it's not a terrible product, but I personally wouldn't recommend it. And then the third one is Super Bounce, which is their hyaluronic acid serum. This one actually has a really nice ingredients list. The hyaluronic acid is obviously an amazing ingredient and it's a pretty simple, clean ingredients list, which I love. I haven't tried this one, but I would be curious to give it a try because I really do like the ingredients in the formula. Hyaluronic acid is a humectant. It's hydrating and plumping to the skin, which is wonderful. And this one has a nice concentration of hyaluronic acid in a pretty simple and clean formula, which I love. So that is our deep dive into the Glossier products. I hope that you found that useful and it gave you some insights into their products and the ingredients lists. Overall, Glossier is such an interesting brand because they really paved a new road in the skincare and makeup industry. They were one of the first brands to go 100% direct to consumer online, own all their channels through e-com and then eventually through stores as well. They built out such incredible branding and their branding and marketing to this day is just so amazing. Like when you buy a Glossier product, it's like you're not really just buying the product, you're buying into the brand and the image and the experience of using Glossier. So I really do have a lot of admiration for Glossier and the way that they were able to achieve that. I think it's very impressive and they really forged a new path in the beauty industry, which was very cool. So as for my overall rating of Glossier, I do give it a thumbs in the middle. And the reason that I'm giving it a thumbs in the middle is I do love the branding. I love the packaging. I think it's super cute. I like that the brand is cruelty free, that it's independent. I don't know if any of you followed what Glossier announced recently during the Black Lives Matter protests, but they are actually putting money on the table and providing grants to help create black owned beauty brands. This is something that I really, really, really admire. And I think it's an incredible thing that they're doing. A lot of brands come out here and just like talk about like, oh yeah, we like diversity and we want diversity and we think it's good and we want inclusion, but they don't really actually do anything to make that happen. I love that Glossier has actually pulled up to the table and they're putting money on the line and they're saying, we want beauty to be more inclusive, we want beauty brands to be more diverse, and we're gonna put our finances on the line to help that happen. So that's something that I really admire, and overall I do like the branding, and of course I like that they're cruelty free. As for their products, there are a couple of their skincare products that I really like, especially Super Pure, which has become one of my all-time favorite skincare products, but I don't love all their formulas. They do use some ingredients that I don't love, I don't really like the fragrance in a lot of their products, and from a clean beauty perspective, they're like 50% there, but like 
not quite. So I think Thumbs in the Middle is good. I think it's a really beautiful brand and I do like some of their products but not some of their others. So I think Thumbs in the Middle is a perfect place to put this brand. So I'm super curious if you have tried any Glossier products and love them or hated them. I'm just curious to hear what you think and your opinions on Glossier. I hope that this video was really helpful and useful and informative and that if you're thinking about buying any Glossier products this gave you some useful insight into whether or not you want to incorporate them into your routine. If you did find this video helpful, useful, informative, entertaining, hopefully all the above, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. I would appreciate it so much and I will see you next time for my next video. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye!